Can you look at a deer and tell if it has chronic wasting disease, otherwise known as CWD? Take a look at this buck. Does this buck have CWD? It looks healthy to me. In fact, it was fighting with other bucks, working scrapes, and going about the normal rut behaviors of any buck in November of last year when this photo was taken. In December, just a couple of weeks after the photo was taken, Jonathan Morgan killed this West Tennessee buck. It was battle scarred from the rut, and it had even lost an eye in a fight since the photo was taken, but otherwise it looked healthy. Because he was hunting in the CWD zone in West Tennessee, Jonathan submitted the deer for testing to his state wildlife agency. The results were positive. This buck had CWD. The incubation period for chronic wasting disease in deer is one to two years. That means that for one to two years, a deer can be carrying chronic wasting disease without showing outward signs that we would recognize as indicating that this deer is sick. Meanwhile, during that entire one to two year incubation period, the deer is still infectious. It can spread CWD prions into the environment and to other deer and it potentially infect other deer. What about this Wisconsin buck? Does it have CWD? Again, it looks healthy and it's working a scrape like any normal buck. Paul Anir killed this buck a week after the trail camera photo was taken. The buck tested positive for CWD. Six of the last 11 deer Paul and his dad have killed tested positive for CWD, more than half of the deer they killed. Not one of them appeared to be sick on the outside. Here's another Wisconsin buck killed by bow hunter Kelly Van Beek in 2020. Does this deer look sick or wasting away? It tested positive. What about this one? Mike Goser killed this one on the same property as Kelly's deer, also in 2020. Again, positive for CWD. I think you get the idea. Now, I know you've seen photographs of deer or elk that had CWD that were skinny, that could barely stand, that looked very sick, and you were told these animals had CWD. It's true. That is the final stage of the disease, which affects the brains and neurological systems of these animals. However, most of these animals you've seen photographs of were in laboratory settings, in research pens, and they were protected from harm until they reached the final awful stages of this disease. In the wild, deer rarely get to that final stage. Remember, this disease is affecting their brain. It affects their ability to function normally even before they begin to appear sick. Researchers have found that deer with CWD die at mortality rates three times that of deer that aren't sick. Again, they are killed by predators, they are hit by cars, they are seen and shot at by hunters at higher rates than healthy deer. That's why in the wild deer rarely reach that bony, very sick final stage of CWD. This is why CWD is not a dramatic disease. It is not easy to see its effect in CWD zones. You don't find a lot of dead deer in the woods. Unlike hemorrhagic disease or EHD, which has outbreaks in summer, that's very rapid. It hits very quickly. The incubation period is only five to 10 days and deer die quickly if they're going to die of hemorrhagic disease. It's very visible. CWD doesn't work that way. And many times deer that have died because they have CWD that were hit by cars or killed by predators, we don't realize that CWD was the underlying cause there. Therefore, CWD is very difficult to see on the landscape. So if you hunt in a CWD zone and you kill a healthy looking deer, do not assume it does not have CWD. Submit it for testing to your state wildlife agency. Now we have no evidence that chronic waste and disease has affected people who've consumed venison of deer that were sick with CWD. However, the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization strongly recommend that you avoid eating the venison of a deer that tested positive for CWD. That's why it is important for you in a CWD zone to get those deer tested and wait for test results before you consume the venison. It's also a great idea to test your deer in CWD zones because that helps the state wildlife agency track the locations of the disease and the prevalence rate, the percent of the local population that's affected. Knowing this information helps the agency manage the disease and keep prevalence rates at low rates. When prevalence rates are low, then that population can sustain hunter harvest for many years to come. We're beginning to learn that we can manage CWD and keep prevalence rates low. 
That lets us buy time for science to find better solutions to this problem. But hunters have got to be engaged and involved and help in the fight against CWD. So join the fight by learning more about chronic waste and disease. And if you hunt in a CWD zone, get all of your deer tested and comply with regulations put in place by the wildlife agency to help manage the disease. If you don't know, if you hunt in a CWD zone, you can visit the website of your state wildlife agency or pull up your Onyx Hunt app. The National Deer Association has a national map layer in Onyx Hunt that shows the zones and CWD zones of states around the nation. Therefore, you can look and see if the place where you hunt is in an active CWD zone. Help the National Deer Association do more in the fight against CWD. Go to our website and donate today at DeerAssociation.com. We are a nonprofit organization. You can also hit that thank you button there in the bottom of the YouTube screen. We are here to ensure the future of wild deer, wildlife habitat, and deer hunting. We hope you'll join us today.